Hi, this is John Gazer with Rock River Laboratory. Today we're going to talk through how to correctly take scissor clippings from a pure alfalfa or a mix between alfalfa and grass stands so that we can get a relative feed value and help us project when to cut our crop. We're going to use scissor clippings to confirm our early season peak stick measurements which we use on our first cutting of the year and then use on subsequent cutting, cuttings throughout the rest of the year to help us plan our harvest. With me today I've got a one square foot which we're going to use to cut all stems within this area, a representative area. I've got just a calf pail which we're going to cut subsamples into this pail. I've got my sample analysis uh, bag that we're going to use to send the scissor clipping to the laboratory and then I also have a, a kitchen or a garden shears to cut the stems. So in order to take the scissor clipping, we're going to want to make sure that we stay away from the headlands or the heavily trafficked areas in the field and we're going to walk out and not necessarily look for the tallest or the thickest area of the field, but rather we're going to more or less randomly toss our square foot out into the stand and then work with that area. So now that we've identified through our square foot a random and representative spot within the field, we're going to get down and go to work. So this is a very healthy alfalfa stand. We probably have 50 to 55 stems within this square foot. That's kind of about the number of stems per square foot that signifies a healthy stand. And we're going to work this square foot now all the way down to the soil. And we're going to make sure to capture all the stems that are within this area. If there are some stems from outside this area, we're gonna, we're gonna pull those out. Now that I have the square all the way down to the ground, I'm gonna use my kitchen shear and uh, very similar to potentially cutting broccoli or asparagus or anything else along those lines, uh, some vegetables. I'm going to grab just a subset of the stems in the square foot and I'm going to set the height that I'm going to cut at similar to what the cutter bar would be moving through the field. So if we have a disc mine or if we're cutting very aggressively, uh, please follow the, the height that you think you'd be out. Whereas if we're going to raise the cutter bar a bit, we're also going to cut up a little bit higher. So I'm going to be working in about a, a two, to, two to three inch height off the ground and cut everything within this square foot. I'm going to be careful to keep the stems stretched out so as though I don't have some that are bent over and I cut them too high. So now you can see I've cut all of my stems fairly uniformly and in order to send them to the laboratory and have the lab do a good job in analysis we have to now cut these into roughly one to two inch pieces into our bucket. I'm going to take the bag out and I'm going to be careful as to not cut myself and cut this entire bunch of stems into about one inch sections. So now that I've done that, you can see I've got a nice blend of all the alfalfa that was within that square foot. So now that we've harvested a single square foot and we've got a beautiful representative subsample of alfalfa, and I say subsample because we want to go and replicate this process now once for every roughly 10 acres of field we have. So with this field, roughly 40 acres, we're going to want to repeat this process at least four times, if not five, to then appropriately characterize this, this entire field. So now that we've gone throughout the field and to characterize our 40 acres here, we've taken 10 subsamples. They're in our bucket here. We want to then get an accurate subsample off to the laboratory so we can determine fiber content, protein content, and help us determine when to cut. So I'm going to want to turn the sample over just like a laundry washing machine, putting my hand down to the bottom and just turning it over. And I'm going to fill roughly half this bag and get it off to the laboratory. So I've filled roughly half the bag. This is all an analysis laboratory Rock River needs to accurately characterize your field. And again, if we've done a good job in taking four or more samples uh, for this 40 acre field here, we're going to get then back a relative feed value, which corresponds back to the fiber and protein content. If we were to harvest this field today at 235 relative feed value standing, we could expect to lose 10 to 15 units of relative forage quality due to leaf losses and fermentation meaning then we would feed out uh, after ensiling roughly 210 relative forage quality alfalfa.